This is really nothing. <laughs> what is going on here? Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take uh, another look at my X58 system. Um, really, uh, I wasn't even going to make a video on this. <clears throat> um, what I wanted to do is um, swap it back out of this case into a larger case that I have so that I can put a water cooler on it. And I was getting all set up to, to tear this down and, and do that. And then I saw my uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 that I'll be replacing with a water cooler. And I thought to myself, we're going to be removing this, uh, you know, assembly, putting a water cooler in there. Generally, it's quieter. Um, doesn't, it's not always quieter, but uh, that's kind of the goal. And then I thought, well, what if, what if quiet wasn't a, a, a concern? Um, the... Hyper 212, you can install a fan on the back here, and, and I have plenty of these laying around. They're, they're pretty nice fans, they move a lot of air, and they're fairly quiet, not the, not the quietest fans in the world. And then um, I also have a set of the older, um, well actually I don't know if it's older, anyways I have a set of NF, uh, F12 PWM Actua fans, and you could you know slap two of those on there. and. Um, and then I thought, you know, what if, what if we didn't care about noise? What if noise wasn't a concern? And we put something completely insane um, in place of this fan, such as one of these. <laughs> the model numbers are really long. Anyways, this is a Delta uh, giant fan out of an old Dell of some sort. Um, and if you power this thing up, the, the noise and the air and the just chaos that this makes is uh, kind of insane. So what if we strapped one of these to the, you know, get rid of this from the strapping it to that, but what if we replaced it with that and um, maybe put this thing through its paces and see uh, see just how capable um, the Hyper 212 is if we just force feed it an ungodly amount of air. And then I thought, well shoot, why stop, why stop there? Why don't we just dig out another <laughs> Delta fan and strap that one to the back and we'll see exactly how well this cooler can cool if it had pretty much all of the air in the world going over it. So um, why don't we do that? That sounds like a little bit of fun. So I'm going to take a few minutes off camera, um, pull all the guts out of here, put it into the other case. We've seen the case that I'm going to put it into before. It used to have my Socket 462 system in it. Um, before I move that over to the Wavemaster case. And um, I'll get this thing ready and we'll start testing things out. And s and just in case anybody here is new to the channel, um, first of all, welcome to the channel. Second of all, this is my X58 system. It's got a Xenon X5690 processor in there, running at stock speeds. I want to overclock it. Um, can easily overclock with this cooler here, but I did want to put a uh, water cooler on it. Um, we got a GTX 1070 in here, and then I've upgraded a bunch of stuff. We've added a USB 3.0 to it. We've added a 500 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive down here for games. Got my SSD drive in here. I don't remember what this is. I think it's a 500 Samsung something or other. Um, and then uh, we got 12 gigs of pretty plain Jane RAM. Um, I'm going to swap them over. See you in a few seconds. And um, then we'll start playing around with uh, some coolant stuff. And voila, just like that, uh, swapped over. I've forgotten that I don't have hard drive caddies uh, for a 3.5 inch drive, unfortunately. So we'll just, we'll leave it down there for a few minutes. Um, and I'll probably eventually uh, print something up to mount it in there. And if you remember, I did make three and a half inch um, drive caddy uh, sleds or whatever you want to call these anyways mounts so I, I can put a regular hard drive in there I just can't put a small two and a half inch one so um, like I said I'll get that taken care of later so uh, let us commence we'll get a baseline for what this uh, keeps it cool that we'll do um, idle temperature and then we'll do um, like Cinebench uh, what do I got on here R15 more than likely and um, We'll just do a quick comparison. We'll see what, if any, one of these, or possibly 
two of these can achieve. So I've had the system running for, um, I don't know, five minutes or so. And um, we've leveled off at about, oh, I'd say about an average of 31 degrees centigrade. Um, maybe 32 for the idle temperatures. So let's go ahead and run it through um, a few rounds of, of uh, Cinebench R15 and get us a benchmark temperature. All right, doesn't take long, I'll see you in a few. After three rounds of throwdown, uh, we're averaging out at about, I don't know, 55, 50, yeah, around 55 average um, for high, uh, high temperatures. Not very high actually, but I mean, this cooler, the Hyper 212, is a 180 watt TDP cooler, and the chip is only 130 watts. So let's see if we can drop those scores a little bit. I, I doubt. Uh, it's a pretty low temperature, actually, so I don't know. All right, so uh, we had to do some modification to the Delta fans to make them um, work in a system that's not a Dell. Um, normally they have a... So normally these Delta fans, at least the Dell ones, have a connector like this, and I think it should be obvious to um, most people why we can't plug it into this computer here. Um, so what I had to do is strip away the wires that aren't needed mainly the, the blue and the yellow wires because those are your PWM signal and your TAC wire. And then the black and red wire are um, 12 volt and ground, simple enough. And then I hooked it up to a Molex connector, again simple, and to can control sort of the speed, because this is going to run, um, you get out of the way. Plugging it like this into your power supply is going to give you the full 12 volts. And I kind of wanted to test it at various speeds. So I created a couple of uh, adapters here. So this will take the 12 volt and take it down to um, 7 volt. And this one will take um, 12 volts and, and uh, reduce it down to 5 volts. And it's kind of simple what you do here. So if we connect our powers together, the 5 volt and the 12 volt, we'll get 5.5, 6. That's weird that that's reading low. Anyways, this is, um, let me get my other multimeter out. Multimeter out. Maybe it reads a little better. But this one's old. This one has been left out in the rain under car hoods. It doesn't have a stand. This should be 12. This is reading nothing. <laughs> what is going on here? Okay, let's try this. This should read 12-ish. Yeah, 12.2, can you see that? And connecting the two powers up together. Yeah, seven volts. And then this one here should be around five. Man, dead on. This thing, this was cheap too, but it reads more accurate than my ex more expensive one from Home Depot. Isn't that great? So, and then to show you here, so all we gotta do is plug in this adapter. And now we have seven volts coming through. Seven volts. So pretty simple. So now we can hook up that fan, the Delta fan, um, control its speed. Um, because if we give it a full 12 volts, like those of you that have, those of you that don't really know about the Delta fan, this thing pushes an unbelievable amount of air and makes a heck of a racket. So, um, let me, let me show that off. This is a good spot to do it. So this will get the full 12 volts. And the reason why I hooked it up to Molex and I didn't want to put a regular fan connector on it, like a four pin or three pin, 
is because this thing pulls over an amp from the socket. Uh, yeah, 1.6 amps. And the motherboard header, you, you shouldn't pull more than an amp out of the, a motherboard um, fan socket. Also, you have to be careful with these. Um, they will cut your finger. Did you see how much torque that has? Holy cow. Watch that thing. <laughs> okay, this. This fan demands a little bit of respect. Please don't put your finger in it. Oh man, I wish you could see how much air this is blowing. So yeah, those, uh, those are no joke. Let's see if it'll turn on at five volts because I don't know what the voltage requirement for these fans are, like the minimum turn on. There are some fans, fans that don't like to run that low. Oh yeah, that, even that, even at five volts. Still moves a crazy amount of air. Yep. All right, let's get this thing bolted in, see what it can do. And then maybe we'll run two of them. But not forever, that's ridiculous. All right, we've been running for a few minutes. Uh, we restarted. Um, I let it go through all of its startup stuff, so now it's truly sitting here idle, and we're sitting below 30 on most cores. Um, the high temperatures over here don't really matter yet. It's just the idle temperature we're looking at. So, uh, yeah, I'd say we're idling at average 29. What did I say before, 31? Not a huge drop, but it is a drop. Let us run some Cinebench and we'll compare our temperatures, our high temperatures, after three runs. Finished up the last run and um, look how low the temperatures are. I think most of those were over 55 the last time. I'll have to check to be sure, but uh, it seems like it's a lot lower. We got, we got cores under 50. And all it takes is this. <laughs> um, I don't think our scores are going to improve by adding another fan, but I've already set it up. Why don't we put it on there? I'll be right back. Okay, I got it on. It uh, looks ridiculous. Let's see what it sounds like. Holy cow. Put you in there. All right, so it's booted up and it's gone through all the stuff it does, so it's truly at idle now. And we're sitting at like 28, 26, 30, 30. So uh, we did get an improvement. Let's run uh, some Cinebench and I'll see what the results are. All right, so last uh, run finished up. Ooh, 777. That's a lucky number. Um, and, wow, we uh, barely broke into the very low 50s, 51, 52, 53. And um, I think the second fan on here is uh, kind of diminishing returns on our investment. <laughs> Holy cow, is that a lot of air. You can just feel it coming out of here. So, um, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> kind of pointless, but kind of cool. Let me, um, let me do away with this monstrosity. I didn't, I don't, I don't think these are necessary. Uh, they're kind of fun to make, but I don't think they're needed. Let's go ahead and tear this down, and, um, I'm going to put the 
water cooler back on there, or on there, I think. I'm gonna hook up the, um, you know, the three pin for the pump. And I was thinking, whoa, holy monkey. I was thinking it goes right down in here, but there's no fan header. It's back there. Yay, it's hidden. Yay. Well, I got it all in there. Um, looking nice, routed the wires nice and everything. Um, hook it up, turn it on, and we're idling at like 50. So either there's air in these or the, well, I mean, obviously there's going to be air in it. Um, what I'm saying is um, the coolant in it is probably permeated out of it. Um, it's probably not full enough to cool this thing off. That's a bummer. It's really a bummer. But I do have another one, so maybe we'll try putting that in there. This is why I like air cooling. I mean, there's nothing wrong with water cooling, but um, they don't last nearly as long as your conventional air coolers or heat pipes. All right, the replacement cooler is in, and already um, our temperatures are a lot better. Uh, I'm going to let it finish booting up. Um, it's trying to start steam and stuff right now, so... Um, We'll wait until that CPU usage is at, you know, uh, 1 or 2%, and then we'll look at our idle uh, temp. So yeah, our idle temps are way better. I wonder what was wrong with that uh, other pump, or um, AIO. Who knows? Um, let's run some Cinebench. I'll be right back after three runs. Last one just finished up, and um, we're, our temperatures are like 10 degrees higher than when we were using uh, the good old tried and true... Um, Hyper 212 with just a stock fan, so I, <laughs> I might go back to it. Um, now, there could be, I mean, this could be suffering from the same thing that the previous one uh, was suffering from, just not to the same extent. And on top of that, you know, I don't have, you know, Noctuals are good and quiet and they move a good amount of air, but they probably don't move as good of air as, um, oh, it's out of reach. They don't move as much air as um, the stock fans. But these are loud. I don't particularly like those. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should put the Hyper 212 fans on to the <laughs> onto this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that was kind of fun, I guess. Um, moved the whole system into this new case. I got the room for the um, water cooler in there. The astute of you will notice that I put a, a different graphics card in here. It's still 1070. Uh, it's just a much bigger and sort of nicer one. We didn't have a sled for the small hard drive, the two and a half inch. I'll do something about that later. I'm on the fence on whether or not I want to try and repair this. Um, maybe it's low on coolant. Maybe it needs different fans. Who knows? Um, but it definitely doesn't perform as good as the Hyper 212 in its current state. So I might address that later. Um, but like I said, I'm probably going to move this system out of this case one day. Um, I don't know when or into what case. But it's probably going to come here in the future. It depends on what I can find at the at thrift stores and stuff like that. So we also uh, <laughs> had a good time with these monsters. And um, I might revisit these things in the, in the future here. They're always fun to play with Delta fans. Um, but yeah, this, this, this video didn't really have a whole lot of uh, point and meaning. Um, I just wanted to do some fun things, play around with the Delta fans, compare the H I or the AIO to the, um, Hyper 212. And I wanted to swap the case over. So kind of did everything I wanted to do. So that was pretty fun. And I hope you had fun too. So, um, if you had fun, go ahead and hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't already done so. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.